Hi everyone, this is Nadia Andreeva from spinachandyoga.com and today is one of the interviews that I'm doing for the launch of my book Happy Belly, Women's Guide for Feeling Vibrant, Light and Balanced. And today we have a very special guest who is actually a contributor to the Happy Belly Eat Cookbook, which is a giveaway to everyone who will buy Happy Belly book. Um, and Nalini Mehta is one of the people who specializes in Ayurveda, but particularly in Ayurvedic cooking. And Nalini grew up with cooking, um, and she's been surrounded by her mother's delightful treats. And then when she came um, to New York, she actually was a cook in Kendall Cafe in Hampton's Chutney, and she was an instructor in Natural Gourmet School in Institute. Um, Nalini is a vegetarian herself, and uh, she also has quite a background in Ayurveda and Ayurvedic cooking. And now Nalini has a practice of uh, cooking classes in California. And Nalini, uh, just take a moment to tell us a little bit exactly what you do and how you help people. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. You're spot on. I think the love for food has taken me to the journey I've had over the years with food and cooking. And I think it, it's about the eating. For me, it was the love for eating that got me interested in cooking. Um, as of today, I would say I've changed. My journey has and experiences have led me from eating just street food craziness of loving Indian food to now eating healthy because I love the energy it brings to me. Mm -hmm. Well, since we're talking about happy belly today, what does a happy belly mean for you? I'll be, I'd say it applies at two levels, the physical level and then the emotional level. Mm -hmm. So at a physical level, a happy belly means for me light and ag agility, agile, uh, satiated but not over full, comfortable, easy, and energize, not heavy, uneasy, and sluggish. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the happy belly that expands to basically your whole body and your state of being, not just your stomach. Absolutely. You know, in India, we have this saying, I'll say it in, in Hindi and then translate it for you. Mm -hmm. It says, um, garam, per garam, pet naram, sar thanda which means for good health, there are three indications. The first, your feet should be warm, your stomach should be supple, not tender, and your head should be cool. So just in that broad spectrum, if you look at these three indications that our body tells us on a every moment-to-moment -moment basis, you will see when you feel, your stomach feels soft, but not tender. I mean, yeah. When you feel tender, you feel you're not well. Yeah. But when your, your body is constantly speaking to you, and if we listen to it, we will feel happy. So it's such a simple saying that if your feet are warm, your head is cool, which means you're not angry. So at an yeah. emotional level, we're also speaking. And your stomach is soft and supple, you will feel healthy. And if you don't feel like this, that is when the onset of disease happens. So for me, I would say, you know, if, if you consider this visual of a pot of food mm -hmm. cooking on a stovetop, it needs to be cooking with the heat level that is not too high and not too low, right? If the flame heat is too high, it will burn the food, right? That's cooking. Mm -hmm. And if it is too low, it won't cook. Similarly, the fire in our belly needs to be at that even keel, not too high or too low. If the fire is too high, you know, the feeling that we have when we're ravenously hungry, if the fire in our belly is too high, it will cause us acidity, not feeling well, feeling Strong just burning cravings. hypertension, cravings, and a lot of discomfort, just a sense of not feeling happy, right? Just if it's too low, the fire in your belly is too low, then the food gets, doesn't get digested. You feel you, you develop toxins. Yeah. So the toxin buildup will then lead to sluggishness, fatigue. You will then have a headache, which you think is in the head. And so you'll pop in an aspirin, but then you're not really addressing where the problem is coming from. Then it could lead to constipation, low immunity, and 
you know, results in many more ailments. So really the stomach is the core of our well-being. I'm totally with you on this. <laughs> and um, I think since we covered why it is important to have a happy belly, because it's basically connected to every single cell in your body, it um, determines the quality of the blood, it determines on how well and clear we're thinking and what's the energy level like. Um, but I think what helps everyone to have a happy belly varies from person to person, just a tiny bit. Um, so what do you do from day to day to keep your belly happy? You know, it's simple things. I think a day to day is a very important thing because we don't feel the same every day. Mm -hmm. One day we are happy for no reason. You, you're doing the exact same things and one day you feel happy in the next day. So we are, our emotions are a big part of being happy. Yeah. So when you're feeling freedom, you're feeling clarity, you're feeling abundant, you feel generosity, then you will feel overall well. Mm -hmm. But it's the reverse also. If your stomach is not well and you're not feeling happy, then the food, which is a key source of energy, will be taken just to cover up because it's your body telling you you need something to bring energy, you need something to feel happy. And so you will eat out of that emotional level of, of actually unhappiness. Yeah. yeah. So energy... And using that food as, as your fuel factory, you know, so if you're, let's say if you're eating every three or four hours, right, mm -hmm. you, you're eating um, whatever comes to you or you're eating with awareness. So for, let's say, for example, you're eating when you're angry, the food's going to go into your system and it's building toxins because you're not eating with that awareness and your body's feeling stress eating the food. So it's the same food. It could be as organic as you can imagine it to be, yeah. but it's not going to serve any positive awareness. It's not going to make you feel happy. So it doesn't serve the, the purpose. I, I don't think I've addressed your question, so let's repeat that question. Well, I guess what we're trying to talk about is let's get a little bit more personal, away from the theory, away from like what yes. we need to communicate to people yes. more. What do you do on a day-to-day to make sure that your stomach feels light, that you digest food well, that you have good energy. Okay. So on a physical level, again, exercise to build a strong core. And for me, that is a daily practice of yoga. Mm -hmm. uh, exercise builds my core to be strong. That helps me overall, my stomach to feel much healthier. Um, but also meditation at least about 10-15 minutes morning and evening helps me stay emotionally balanced. So we're addressing the emotional level and the physical level. So again, exercise, meditation, eating at regular intervals. And, you know, diets are all fine, but eating really well. And by that, I mean, again, simple. It's an idiom, right? We've all heard it. Eat your breakfast like a prince. Eat your lunch like a king and eat dinner like a papa. That's really the simplicity with which I follow it. Mm -hmm. Eat a, a good breakfast, eat, eat your meals properly, you know, don't skimp on it. It's yeah. not, you cannot fix everything by calories or by following diets because no one diet fits everyone. You are a unique individual. And so again, keeping the different aspects of how are you feeling to, today? What is the awareness that you're bringing to yourself? So feeling connected with what you're eating and how you're feeling. Yeah. So those are the three things that I really follow on a daily basis. In addition to some massage, um, just, you know, massaging the, the soles of my feet with some hot oil, like sesame oil, mm -hmm. really helps me both in the morning and sometimes at night before going to sleep really gives me a restful night's sleep and a, a, a day where I feel charged. Okay, perfect. Good. Let's let's talk a little bit about more about specific foods. So what are some, let's do three foods that make your belly happy. Sure. Now you did mention I'm a vegetarian. Yes. But I think whether you're vegetarian or not, you cannot have enough vegetables. You know, mm -hmm. eat tons of fruits and vegetables. You can't get enough of it because not only is it a great source of nutrients, 
but it's also a great source of fiber. So not just the taste in your mouth, but how do you feel after eating the food? Um, do you feel heavy and sluggish or energized? And the next day, how are you feeling constipated or are your, your stomach easily releasing all the excess mm -hmm. fiber? So I'm a body type where um, I'm more vata, which means an air personality. So I eat foods that are grounding for me. So, for example, eating seasonally, what's in season just now, it's, it's January uh, 2014. And you here in California, where I'm based, uh, we get so many amazing vegetables. I mean, we're so blessed. So sweet. Last night was pumpkin. And it doesn't have to be really just boring pumpkin. We made a delicious um, pumpkin pasta. Mm -hmm. So you, you could have some, you could you, treat yourself. It doesn't have to be just pumpkin raw and just makes you feel like, what, what is this? You know, it, yeah. it has to be delicious. It should be delicious to the taste. But today, this morning, after eating pumpkin, I felt great for good yes. reason. You know, my, hap my, my belly is happy. So... Um, Greens, eating in season, so whether it's, in, in my case, eating a lot of root vegetables mm -hmm. that are growing just now, and then having lentils as my source of protein, I would recommend these three okay, ingredients. Um, are there foods that make your belly unhappy? Mm. I, you know, it's not just food that makes, well, makes your belly foods unhappy. First. Foods first, okay. Well... Easy example, just the opposite of what we just spoke about, eating a lot of fiber. I love eating, like I said, food that, like mac and cheese, what, what, you know, who doesn't? But after eating a lot of carbs and not so much fibrous foods, I tend to feel extremely constipated the next day. I hate to admit this, but it's true. I yep. feel, feel not you know, my stomach is not able to release it. I will feel water retention. So I I'm not saying don't have it, but know what Be you're prepared eating. prepared for consequences. <laughs> exactly. Eat with that awareness. You know, yeah. it just helps me a lot. So maybe I'll do that. You know, I will eat my mac and cheese, but I'll top it up with a lot of arugula. Yeah. You know, so I'm getting a lot of fiber with it. So once in a while you, you cheat, but you're feeling good about cheating because you also have great fiber going with it. Yep. I'm with you. I think it's not about necessarily restricting yourself. It's more about how can you balance yourself based on understanding the consequences that your body will experience. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I, I'm, you're talking to somebody who loves food, irrespective of now when I feel I, I'm, my journey and my life has taught me so much about eating well. But before when I used to you know, life's too short. I need to eat everything that makes me feel good. But did it really make me feel good? No, it did not. So life has taught me, or eating, where I ate those foods that I thought will bring me happiness really gave me no happiness. But being able to cook myself has given me those tools to be able to make the same thing. Like in India, we get this delicious street food. It's with fried bread, and then you put lots of... Uh, potatoes over it so it's oh, carbs, upon that in carbs. India. it's it's delicious it's delicious but why do you need carbs upon carbs yeah instead i've replaced the potato with an avocado mm -hmm. and i i need some so the i still use instead of the the fried bread i use papadam which is a lentil wafer mm -hmm. so you use a lentil papadam top it with an avocado and some just liven it up with some sprouted mung beans mm -hmm. and I have and that you know sprinkle delicious. it with lemon juice and some cumin powder it's just deliciousness so I still get the exact same taste without feeling heavy the next yeah. day yeah yeah beautiful um and maybe we can share that recipe <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I just gave it, it. It's as simple as so. That's the yeah. other thing: is how can you make it simple so that it doesn't feel? Oh, I have to make this exotic gourmet meal. It doesn't have to be so complicated. In fact, the best things are eaten when they're simple yeah. and they're delicious. So yeah. So for somebody who is struggling with digestion, like mm. they have bloating, they have constipation, and they're just on the, at the beginning of their journey of trying to figure out what is it exactly that uh, my body needs? 
what is your advice? Like one thing that people can start doing tomorrow. Because I think it's hard to change habits when we have this huge list, like do this and this and this and this and start being mindful and start drinking water. And one thing that somebody can it's start doing It's the simple tomorrow. rule that we need to follow in everything in our life. It's following the KISS principle, right? Keep it simple. Mm-hmm. And I have a story to share with you. And then you'll see, I don't know, you've traveled to India. You, you may know of Lord Ganesha. He's, mm-hmm. he's the, the god with the elephant face. And um, he's known to have a big belly. Yeah, he's actually the Lord for to, that the God that abundance. is designating abundance and removing os, um, uh, obstacles in your life. So the story goes that he loves to eat and he loves to have delicious food. So let me tell you about this ancient mythological story, which really put it in simple perspective. The story goes that one day Ganesha drank so much milk that his belly burst. So he grabbed a cobra, and this is a kid, they're just showing the simplicity. He grabbed a cobra like it was a rope. Remember, his Mm -hmm. stomach has burst. So he takes the rope or the cobra and ties it around his stomach. Do do you see it? His stomach is broken. He's tied a knot to keep the stomach together. But here the cobra is actually representation of awareness of the you know how it's symbolic of a cobra to be alert. Mm-hmm. So it signifies that you accept you accept a big belly or you accept eating well, mm-hmm. but you eat with awareness. Eat with that alertness, which will actually give you true acceptance and love. So do you see the two words we're using? Yeah. Acceptance and love. So no judgment. No you shame, no guilt. You can burst, let your stomach burst, but then bring it back together with love and acceptance. That's a really good one. And I think in the beginning of a journey, it's such a necessary tool. Just, just bring yourself together with, with that feeling of, I can make this happen if I'm aware of what I'm putting in my stomach. And how I feel after. How I feel after. How Am I eating when I'm angry? I often tell my students... Don't eat when you're angry. The food's going, like we literally, my mother would say, your stomach, your food's going to the donkey. (laughs) You're not eating, it's going to the donkey. And we never really understood, but now it makes sense because if you're going to be angry and you're stressed, the food's not doing what it's meant to do for you. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Nalini, for such a good advice. If people want to learn more about your practice, what is your website? It's root to India, like R O U T E to India. It's my way of telling people to come and learn from the wisdom and simplicity of our culture. What Ayurveda talks about 5,000 years ago for having a good digestion, for having a, a, your health well. To today, the modern appetite still needs the same principles. It's like you can engage yourself with that knowledge, with simplicity. So I hope you can connect with Nadia and myself to do some fun, simple techniques that make our life full of celebration. Yeah, and definitely check out Nalini's uh, mm-hmm. website for the recipes. And uh, guys, if you want to improve your digestion and learn more tips for having a happy belly, uh, reducing bloating, improving regularity, make sure to download the free chapter underneath the video. And then afterwards, if you like the chapter, you can always buy the book. So thank you for being with us and we'll see you soon. Bye.